Everything's gonna be alright And when we get there I'ma see a pretty, pretty, pretty young thing I'ma ask her to take my hand Head to the floor And we gon' dance And when we get there Best believe we're gonna do a two-step Ain't no drama in here So don't stress Step to the right Then side to the left Good evening, welcome to the Stephen Knight Show. Hope you had a great Monday. Hopefully it'll get a little bit better for you right now. We're back with the latest in sports, fashion, movie reviews, and the best indie music out there. Later on the show, we welcome R&B vet Trainer Broussard, who has a brand new single called Where I'm Supposed to Be. And then founder and CEO of Achille Apparel, Randy Achille, joins us. Now, his line was only out for two years, a little over two years, and already has celebrities and uh, professional athletes rocking his clothes. So you definitely want to hear his inspiring story. Hot Topics talking about the Oscars. You know, everything went down at the Oscars yesterday. There's some other things we think you want to know about and talk about. <laughs> Listen, we're all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, and, of course, our official, our official website, thestephenisshow.com. You can also check us on iTunes. Uh, you can check us on iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com, YouTube, SoundCloud, you name it. Go to stephenisshow.com for more information. When we come back, Hot Topics, right back after this. Oh, oh, oh. Cause the way that she rocking and shaking her too much Only not far too much For the homie she from Kakatai All the men is scatter That all been in a way in a track line When you tie your lap And you wear your skin tear When you rocking your too much Bangle, I want my ray Chamu, I want to take you Anything you want, I give it to you Take my knee, my money, my car, my clothes, my What the you not see funk get capping? Like I said before, hungry line blocking. You leave it, another scam and we'll buy pay. Grab it, squeeze it, we'll dry face. That it done, you will be trying how to catch it. You know you're missing a casa by Rubete. Fix it, oh fire, trying how to catch it. Then you won't speak serious now till they get it. Pretty girl, let me take you out of dinner. I gotta chat up, forgive me, I was a sinner. Gonna be better from January down to December. Take trips, go to spots even in the winter. So sexy, gorgeous, and beautiful. Everything. That we do is memorable. I'm feeling you from your head down to your toes. Don't have to speak on it, I'm gonna show. Man, it 
دست نگاه چسی و بار جو پاشی چکی And it's she walking The boy them be watching The boy them be watching And it's she walking The boy them be jaking The boy them be jaking Baby girl you temptation And it's how you turn girl You confusion Baby girl you temptation And it's how you turn girl You confusion Oh, back to the Stephen Knife Show. Before we go into hot topics, I want to give a special shout out to Janera and Miss Parker, who both celebrated birthdays. Janera's birthday is today, so happy birthday. And Miss Parker's birthday was yesterday. So Pisces season is in effect. Mine's on the 20th, so, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. He wants to get me something. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on with you? What's up, brother? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I can't complain. It's been, it's been a pretty good Monday. I can't complain. How about you? Yeah, yeah it's a pretty good Monday. Coming off of a, a pretty good weekend. I finished my movie, Steven. The slot is complete. We wrapped yesterday. Man. Oh, yeah. I saw the pictures on social media. It's been a long time coming. But what can, what can you tell us about it? it? Uh, what can I tell you about it? <laughs> it's a horror slash comedy sort of film. Um, just something goofy out of my crazy psychosis. Um, that's pretty much all I want to say about it right now. Okay. Well, congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sir. And we have Zayvon back to co-host with us. Welcome back, Zayvon. Hey, welcome, it's, welcome. It's an honor and a privilege to be back. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very yeah. much. Yes, yeah, sir. So how, how was your weekend? Uh, I had a rougher weekend than normal, but, uh, you know, I'm alive yeah. and I'm, I'm grateful and thankful for that. Most definitely. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, um, you do a lot of uh Instagram and Facebook Live and I was watching you last week, you you showing people how to make healthy snacks and the you chose popcorn. Um and I thought it was very informative because I was wondering how, how would you do it, you know, outside of because you don't believe obviously in the getting the bag and microwave it and all that kind of stuff. Um how often do you stuff like that to make videos to help people out? Um, honestly, uh, I do it based upon, uh, my mood for the day, but, mm-hmm. uh, I'm basically, the more, um, things that people, uh, want me to create or make, uh-huh. um, I'm down to, to, I want to, uh, a live stream and show them how to do it, uh, you know, a healthy alternative option. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. like, whatever it is that they want. Right, 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 right. Well, it looked really good, and so uh, it made me want to get, have some popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> so, uh, we lost Chike. Hold on a second. I can edit that part out. Okay. I'm going to stop recording real quick. All right, well, our question today is, what is something you learn to do as you've gotten older? You've learned to do as you've gotten older. Chike, you take it. Um, I'm still working on it, but more patience. Uh, I think that I, I can withstand, uh, I can be a little bit more tolerable to certain things. Uh, now that I've gotten older, I've learned how, and Mm -hmm. then uh, it works the other way too. I've learned not to have tolerance for certain things. So it's a Mm -hmm. double-edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Zayvon? All right, so drop that question for me one more time. (laughs) Okay. It's what's something that you've learned to do? as you've gotten older? Um, it, it would definitely have to, 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 uh, 
be working on uh, communicating. Yeah. Um, because in my past, uh, I was absolutely terrible at it, man. Absolutely terrible at it. And every single day, it's uh, it's a learning experience. Um, like, it, it's it's never going to be perfect. Right. But um, we we just we just have to constantly work at um, figuring out how to get our point across um, in a respectful and, and uh, meaningful way without uh, causing harm, man. Right. So, yeah. I agree. I agree. That's just one thing I've learned is to try not to always feel like I have to please everyone. And that's okay to say no and put myself first sometimes. I, I'm always, I hate disappointing people, but I realize sometimes you have to. And even sometimes my idea of disappointing somebody is really not that serious to them, but just because I hate telling people no. But I've learned to do it because you can't do everything. You'll be too spent, drained, and, you know, you have to look after, after yourself as well so you can be better for other people. So that's one thing I've learned. One thing I've learned. We had some really good responses on uh, my Facebook page. Um, I'll read a few of them. Dwayne said, effective communication, listening to understand. Um, Alvin said, make himself happy. Scott said, patience. Just another Scott, he wrote a lot. <laughs> he wrote, uh, I, can't say I, I can't say I trust and have faith in God's purpose for me and try to control every situation. If I can't stand by it without shame or without regret, don't do it. All emotions come from two things, love, joy, happiness, and peace, and fear, depression, anger, and sadness. Learn to turn those fearful emotions into loving emotions. Um, Adrian said, how to pick my battles a little better. Carmen said, trust to love and acceptance. Uh, Katie said, honesty can make, people's, can make people see you as negative. But a lot of people just they uh, commented. So if you want to check it out, go to my Facebook page, Stephen Knight. All right, you ready for these hot topics? Oh, tweet us at Stephen Knight Show S H O and let us know uh, what's something you learned to do as you got older. All right, so everyone was talking about the Oscars today. Um, you know, Chica, I know that we're going to do, talk, go more in detail with Adam and the movie review segment. But what were your thoughts of the Oscars overall? To be totally honest. I did not see the actual ceremony because I was filming. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I did take stock in was the um, backstage interviews of the winners. I did catch that, and I okay. actually caught all of them. And if any, if no one's ever take a, taken a look at the the backstage interviews, it's more of an in-depth interview uh, of the winners as opposed to them actually winning and being on stage because they only have so many minutes to thank right. everyone that they can possibly think of, and then they're rushed off stage. The backstage mm -hmm. is pretty much more of a detailed um, experience of what they're feeling, and they've had a chance to calm down and gather their thoughts, so it's more of a, a educated uh, response as opposed to um, something that they probably already pre thought of and right. it's pretty interesting you know the fact that they were how they um broke down um their winnings and how they felt about it of course jordan peele blew me away with his and he was just in awe being in the building with all of his idols and all the people that uh, he paid homage to um in his backstage speech uh it was it was it was moving it, it was very inspirational because he came from a place of being a fan and he felt like he was still a fan, even though that he won that. And I guess the theme of the night for most of the winners was that um, having uh, accolade such as an Oscar wasn't something that was on their dreamscape. They all mm -hmm. looked at that as something being unobtainable. They didn't dare dream of it because it was too big. And how dare they dream of that and jinx themselves. So yeah. I thought that was pretty uh, interesting and pretty human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Zivon, did you watch? Man, again, I had a rough weekend. Yeah. I, didn't time. I didn't have time to watch it, man. No, I understand. So. I understand. I didn't. I didn't watch either. I was uh, at Wakanda. I went to go see Black Panther again last night. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but one thing they were talking about, um, they were 
there was surprise that Get Out was pretty much shut out. They, the only winner was Jordan Peele, who won um, for Best Screenplay. But they are a lot of other nominations that they didn't get. People thought they, especially Movie of the Year, they thought they were going to get that. Mm-hmm. Um, then they, people took notice that no, no black woman won anything last night. Um, and then, of course, the Time's Up Me Too movement, that was on full display. Um, some of the Harvey Weinstein um, top you know, accusers, they came out um, together on stage and said, Me Too uh, and Time's Up kind of situation. One thing that was interesting, Ryan Seacrest, I don't know if you heard about this, he uh, has been under fire allegations that his former stylist, she said that he, you know, sexually uh, was inappropriate sexually towards her. And so um, he's denied all claims and said that uh, she was just a disgruntled employee. Well, someone that also worked with her said that he actually saw Ryan doing certain things, but he said that they're both on the, they're both disgruntled. That's that's been the whole, um, you know, the whole issue. But there was an investigation, and it was found that Ryan they didn't see anything that enough proof that Ryan had done anything wrong. Well, the the craziness was he was on the red carpet, and they were trying to decide should he have decided to stay home because it wasn't really about him. It was more about the actors or should he have still been on the red carpet? Well, he did come on the red carpet and only two people out of people scheduled to come meet with him came and interviewed with them. And um, they thought a lot of so they basically iced him out, iced him out. They thought a lot of uh, the publicists probably were like, it's probably not a good look until this is resolved. Do you think he should have been there? Or do you think the, the actors should have interviewed? What are your thoughts on all that? I, I see both sides of that. I mean, of course, him being Ryan Seacrest, you know, and and he, and from his standpoint, nothing happened, and they, they were just disgruntled employees. You know, the show still must go on. And he was already scheduled to be there. Of course, he's going to go to the Oscars. Mm-hmm. You know, the year. Of course, he's going to. Um, as someone in his camp, if they could have advised him, it was a little hot on the block for him. I would have chilled. You're Ryan Seacrest. You got a whole lot going on. Necessarily need to be there to cover the Oscars, but I understand why he went. But he didn't have to be there. Yeah, yeah. Well, one uh, something I saw today that uh, kind of touched me: Sandra Bullock was um, interviewed on the red carpet, and she was emotional because she had just met the cast of Black Panther, and. She said the reason why she got emotional is because her son, she has a you know a black son, um, he asked her, were there any black Lego, Legos? And she oh. said, absolutely. And she went and, and she took a black marker and colored it black. And she did uh, Spider-Man and some other action figures. And she said, now she shouldn't have to do that anymore because there, we have a black, uh, we have black, um, you know, superheroes. So. She was very emotional. You, got, you could tell, as a, I guess as a parent, you know what I mean? You, you want your, your children to uh, see representation of them, you know, especially on a large screen like that. What are your thoughts on all that? Well, first of all, I want to shout out to all of those parents that are raising African-American children who aren't of African-American descent. Mm-hmm. I, know, I know a few, and their biggest struggle is making sure that the child ha- has touched with their roots. Right. And there is no way that a person who's non-African American could ever understand what it is to be African American in this country. It's a, it's a unique position to be in, mm-hmm. and you just can't understand it or know it unless you are it. And what the people that I know, what they do is they make sure that um, those children have touchstones that are African American, like maybe the godparents, or uh, you know, a close friend, or an aunt, or an uncle. There's someone that the child can spend time with to absorb some of the culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I don't want to ever deter anyone from taking in children, or adopting, or foster children. I don't want to deter anyone from that, but it is difficult, you know, raising. And I don't want to just say African American. I'm sure it's difficult raising any child who's of a different culture and you right. you know are trying to raise them in this country and you're other mm-hmm. it has mm-hmm. to be like i can't even imagine yeah yeah what are your thoughts Avon? um i think it's it's been too long enough 
for us not to have uh, um, an impact on uh, everything within this country, especially toys. I mean, black people have kids too. Um, right. That play with Legos. Uh, why? Why isn't that already a thing? You know. Um, yeah. Or why? Why are the toys that are available? You know, the ratchet ones uh, that are maybe twerking or uh, booty shaking or something like that, or just just real um, uh, derogatory when it comes to showing like the worst sides of. Uh, the black culture here in the U.S. So, like, I don't know. But I really, I, I commend her for, um, you know, taking that step forward and, and, and doing something like that. I'm sure uh, her child is going to remember that for the rest of his life. And uh, mm-hmm. it, it's good. Yeah, it's good. And maybe exactly. the industry is going to change after uh, this story is, is made. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, I, I watch This Is Us. So I love that show. And on This Is Us, um, for those that don't watch it, um, the main family, they, um, the husband and wife, the, the mom was pregnant with triplets, and she lost one of them giving birth. And uh, right after she gave birth, a baby had been found at a fire, fire station, and the fireman brought it to the hospital, and he was black. The other family's white, and they adopted him with the family that saw him as the third child. So anyway, he grows up uh, with the family, you know, as his mom, dad, brother, and sister. And um, early in the show, you know, this lady was watching, uh, the black lady was watching him interact with the mom and everything, and she felt kind of, you could tell she felt some kind of way about it. And she was pretty much telling the mom that she needed, he needs to be around black kids. He needs to learn black culture. And, you know, she's thinking, well, you know, color doesn't raise a child. But, but I think something clicked in her mind where she saw how important it was to start bringing their, her black son to this black family and letting him hang out with them to learn the culture. I think that it takes, it, it takes getting past your ego to see what's best for your kid. And I think the fact that her character today on the show showed, um, you know, that, it, it, that you understand the value in people seeing and growing up around or influenced by th- that people they can identify with, you know, culturally. So, um, but yeah, I did, that was what I thought about when I, when Sandra Bullock, I think she did the same thing by trying to expose her son to uh, black culture, which is great. All right. Uh, so people were a little upset because, you know, uh, T.I. and Tiny had filed for um, divorce and it seemed lately they had been getting along and you would see them together and, you know, everyone was kind of excited for their their reunion. Well, it looks like that a reunion may not be happening. So apparently, uh, Tiny, she bought a home and moved outside the family home in 2014. And she had a mortgage of a million dollars, a little over a million dollars, that was supposed to be due by the end of April. To, I'm sorry, it was supposed to be due in April 2016. Well, she signed another deal asking it to be extended to this year. And so Boston is reporting this. So Tiny um, bought the home in 2014. Again, for she bought the home for for close to 50, well fifteen thousand dollars. No, that's not wrong. A million, a million four hundred eighty-one five hundred dollars. Um, that has six bedrooms, eight ba- bathrooms, six fireplaces, an exquisite wine cellar, uh, seven thousand eight hundred seventeen square foot living space. Now. Tiny, um, she made moves to stay in the home, so it seems like she's not really ready to go back in the home because she's not trying to sell the home. Even though she doesn't have the reality show, T.I. and Tiny, the family hustle, uh, she still has the tour money, and she has her group escape. They've reconnected. So they divorced in December, or they filed for divorce in December 16th uh, and said that there's no hope of getting back together. Um, they said she's been living separately separately and asked T.I. to make a full accounting of their money, property, and investment accounts because uh, she's entitled to half of everything. Now, the singer turned reality star asked for half of the automobiles they uh, assumed during their union as well as money T.I. had in his retirement account. She also asked for primary legal and physical custody for for their kids. She acknowledged that uh, the couple is in debt, likely the millions that they owe to the IRS, and she said 
because of T.I.'s high earning ability, he should be responsible for paying it off. And the, and T.I. countersued her late last year, and both of them asked the court for more time to work things out. Now, there's been no movement in the case in almost four months based on court records. Do you think her by extending that home that she's done playing on the back end? I saw her, um, I don't know if it was an interview or if, if she was on a reality show, but she was talking about her in this home. And she was being very braggadocious about having a separate living space from him. And mm-hmm. she was very happy about it. So I can't see her giving it up. Mm-hmm. I don't think she would give it up. Yeah. At least not from what I saw. I can't see her giving it up. Mm. And I and I think that's part of the reason why, um, you know, Escape got back together. She needed some legs to stand on on her own, separate from him. Yeah, because he didn't want her. I remember when they were, well, in Mary, he didn't want her doing music. He wanted her to stay at home with the kids. Yep. And so, yeah. That, that, mm. What do you thought, Um, I think, I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having your own. Um. So if she can afford it, then by all means, if not, uh, you can't, ex- I mean, expect, I don't know. It, it's, it's just, it all depends on, on what their agreement was initially. Right. Um, but um, that's a lot of bread um, for one one person, you know, it, or even if you just have the kids there too, you know, uh, yeah. they're all growing. Um, but it's a part of the lifestyle. So, I mean, who knows? Right. You know? Right. And then I wonder also, once you move out the house and you get your own place, is it easy to move back in? You know what I mean? Because back Absolutely in, not. it goes back to, you know, the reason why you probably broke up in the first place. So I don't know. I thought about that. Now she has her own most, place, her own space, you know, most don't get rid of the second space. They move mm-hmm. back in, but they keep the second space. Just in case. Just in case. Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's take a quick break. We'll come back. More hot topics. We're back after this. It's KJ on the beat. We're all alone. Nobody knows. Should keep it, baby. We've been creeping on the low. No time to waste. It's getting late. Can't jump off the deep end. We're supposed to be here, but it feels so good. Feels so good. Let me love you like that. Touch you right there. Kiss me on the neck. The love we make is real. 
on top of me. You got the look of a diva, dog. Got it all now. Follow the procedure. I need you to leave your mind, bring your body. Ain't nothing but an Eastside party. You got the look of a diva, dog. Got it all now. Follow the procedure. I need you to leave your mind, bring your body. Ain't nothing but an Eastside party. She got a diva look. She walk in the room, everybody like. She got a diva look. She walk in the room, everybody like. I could tell what she hitting on. Already got me thinking what she sipping on. I could see her roommate playing bodyguard. The other one best friend. She gon' block hard. But my game like Jordan Jackson. Spit it like Biggie when I get it cracking. See everybody be a dawn in my faction. OG schooled us to go past them. I inbound the ball. Broke the full court press. How you doing? What's your name? What's next? Followed by a verbal game of chess. A couple words in her ear. Let us hang the rest. I'm like, you got the look of a diva. Don't got it all now. Follow the procedure. I need you to leave your mind, bring your body. Ain't nothing but an Eastside party. Ooh. You got the look of a diva. Dog got it all now. Follow the procedure. I need you to leave your mind, bring your body. Ain't nothing but an Eastside party. Ooh. She got a diva look. She walk in the room, everybody like. Ooh. She got a diva look. She walk in the room, everybody like. I step off, her friends start judging. He's not the type to wipe up or love him. Now her emotions kick, push, and shoving. She see through the persona that they be loving. Cause my game Cam Newton, Tom Brady. Mama's baby raised me from the 80s. Taught me how to talk when it's to a lady. I put it down so for show, no maybe. I feel a vibrate in my pocket. The text read, I'm digging what I'm watching. I replied, I'm digging that you're watching. Let's slide off a combo when nobody's watching. I'm live. You got the look of a diva. Dog got it all now. Follow the procedure. I need you to leave your mind. Bring your body. Ain't nothing but an Eastside party. You got the look of a diva. Dog got it all now. Follow the procedure. I need you to leave your mind. Bring your body. Ain't nothing but an Eastside party. Cool, old school, big Snoop Dogg, I be breaking the rules. I'm phenomenal, your mama knows, so I'ma go and get it. Push did the beat, so you know I got to spit it. So cool, new school. A Omega, I be dropping them jewels. I'm phenomenal with a ganja blow, so baby, come and hit it. Cush did the beat, so you know I'm gonna spit it. You got the look of a diva. Dog got it all now, follow the procedure. I need you to leave your mind, bring your body. Ain't nothing but an east side party. You got the look of a diva. Dog got it all now, follow the procedure. I need you to leave your mind, bring your body. Ain't nothing but an east side party. Got the look of a diva. Dog got it all now. Follow the procedure. I need you to leave your mind. Bring your body. Ain't nothing but an east side party. Ooh. Hi, this is Trina Broussard, and you're listening to my new single, Where I'm Supposed to Be, on the Stephen Knight Show. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. We we'll remind you all over social media Facebook, Twitter, Google, Plus, Instagram, and of course, our official website. You can also find us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud. Go to our website. You'll find out more about it. All right, so Neo's wife, Crystal Smith, uh, she turned heads last week. She made an IG post uh, 
in essence, she was saying that because she's um, Hawaiian and black, and she said she made a comment about she wished her son was blessed with her Hawaiian hair because his hair is dry and she didn't really know how to manage it. Uh, and she was asking for help from the you know which what can I use to help? She was asking people on social media. Well, a lot of people were offended by that, and uh, you can imagine why. Well, TMZ caught up with her and they asked her, you know, what are her thoughts on the comments about, um, you know, the feedback from the comments she made about her son's hair, and she said that she loves her son and that, you know, she said that she nothing's wrong with his hair, but she wants his hair to be soft. She wants to, what can she do to condition it and make it, you know, not dry and all that kind of stuff. This is pretty much what she's asking for. But she said that she feels like that people were so hard on her because they don't like seeing black men date outside their race. And they said people don't don't realize that she's half black, but in general, people don't like seeing interracial couples in this way. And so that's why they probably came up hard on her. But she said she's going to come out with her own hair care um, line uh, for kids like hers. And she loves her son and she'll do whatever anything for him. Do you think there were comments, I mean, her comments about her son not being blessed with Hawaiian silky hair, was that offensive? Because I heard the two ge- gentlemen, I was actually um, at work in our cafeteria, and these two older white guys were watching it, and they thought it was ridiculous that people were coming down on her. And at first, I've, I was kind of offended by her comments, because especially in this, in the in the age we're living in now where people are embracing natural hair and all this kind of stuff. But listening to today, I'm like, mm, I don't know. She, maybe she didn't mean it like that. What are your thoughts on all this? Well, I've never really liked that term, good hair, bad hair. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I think all hair is good. If it's growing and, right. and you can comb it and you can brush it and it's full and healthy, it's mm-hmm. all good hair. Right, um, right, right. We, we, there are different textures. Um, some textures are easier to manage over others. And I know what she meant, but this is a language that has been passed down through generations. Right. Right. And um, even if some people don't mean it the way it comes out, the term is probably in your lineage, and it's just going to come out because you've heard it. doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily mean that you really think it's bad hair or good hair. It's just that's the language. Right. Um, right. I understand she probably hadn't had to deal with a more coarse texture of hair, so she doesn't know how to, to how to manage it. I have friends that have uh, mixed children, and the hair is different textured, and they don't know how to manage it. So sometimes you see the kids, especially when they're girls, they'll come out and it's like unruly because they don't know how to take care of it. <laughs> and someone has to come in and show them you know, like how to braid it up and how to brush it with um, products to use. Um, and if you think if someone, say someone Caucasian is raising a uh, uh, half African American and half Caucasian child, you have to use grease sometimes. Mm-hmm. Caucasian people don't really use grease. They're they're doing the opposite. They're running away from grease. So you know it's about education. So she was just looking for some education. I can't fault the lady for that. She wants to take care of her son. Right. Devon. Well, personally, I don't have hair on my head, so <laughs> I, I can't relate. But um, I remember um, that that is a statement that is uh, that's that's common, you know, good hair. And uh, she she she's legitimately trying to figure out what to do. You know, uh, people are always just quick to jump on, on 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 someone when they're, you know, legitimately asking for help, you know, or mm-hmm. just just looking for a, a way to to um spin it or or turn it into more than what it is. I mean, simply she's just asking what to do with my child here. I mean, there's there's absolutely nothing else other than that. Like I would see if she, you know, were to go on there and say, uh, my child's head is nappy and I can't right. take this, um, you know, throw the child away or just something crazy like that because, you know, um, he can't come from me because I got good here. Like, stuff like that, if it, if it was like that, then I, I could see, like, why uh, social media would 
you know, tear her up, but it it doesn't make sense. Like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Why? I think yeah, people are, are too sensitive. Out? Yeah, people people are too sensitive. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. she. I mean, it was a a post. It wasn't anything serious. You know, obviously, you can tell if you watch the interview. She loves her children. You know, um, I don't know. I think people are just too sensitive. And people, and I do, I do kind of agree with her that some people do hate to see um, successful uh, black men with women that aren't black, or you know, 100% black. And so I That's think true. that that does play a role in it. So she was kind of right with that. But I, I do like that she said that she's going to start her own hair care line and try to worry about all this. <laughs> so that's good. All right. Uh, so Jay Z and Beyonce announced that they're doing another joint tour um, on the run two. That was listed on Beyonce's Facebook and Ticketmaster pages, but both have been deleted since. Now the listing said that the concert takes place Monday. The first concert takes place Monday, July 30th at, in Philadelphia. Um, but uh, Pitchfork, who released this article, they reached out to Beyonce and Jay Z's respect, uh, respective representatives, but no information was provided. But this will be their first tour together since 2014 on the run tour. Um, will, will you go see this concert? Will you go see the tour? Uh, me personally, I won't. Um, I'm not really a fan of big um, arena shows. I've seen Jay-Z. I've seen Beyonce. I haven't seen them together, but I've, mm-hmm. I've seen them separately at our big arena here in Philadelphia. And shout out to Jay and B because they always show Philly love. They actually love this city, and um, they're always here. Um mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I think it'll be a great show. I, I, me, personally, I just don't – it's just too much for me, personally. I like standing room only. I like smaller venues. I like more intimate mm-hmm. concerts. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, um, I think it'll be an awesome show. They, they normally sell out the house. They tear it down. And uh, I wish them much success. Yeah. Is it fun? Uh, I think it's it's – it's a smart decision from from uh, their standpoint. Like, why not? They're basically uh, still on top of uh, black culture, uh, music, the music scene, everything. Like, to make all the money that you can um, while you're still, you know, right. uh, it. You know, so you can you can um, extend into other businesses and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know, I, I don't know how accurate it is, but uh, I think I saw something about Beyonce uh, uh, advocate advocating to her fans about going vegan. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I saw that. So you know, I, I had to drop that sound bite. No, of course, this is our vegan astro- <laughs> here on the line. <laughs> he got it on me because I had uh, lobster tail the other night. You tell me that's what I get. Because my stomach was upset. <laughs> well, um, I want to ask a quick. This is something funny. This is not part of hot topics, but you know they always say that you know people compare Beyonce to Jesus. Her fans do with Beehive. Well, uh, Wendy Williams, right after the whole Fergie um, national anthem, uh, Wendy Williams that Monday she was talking about it on her show during her Hot Topic segment. And she was saying that, you know, she likes Fergie, but she prefers to do, like, the pop of tempo song. She said everyone can't sing the national anthem. She was saying artists like Fergie, Beyonce, she and some people said they all need auto-tune. And she said people that don't, she said Dionne Warwick, uh, Mariah Carey, whatever. Well, the next day, Wendy Williams, you know, of course, B.I. was upset about that. The next day, Wendy Williams came back to her Tuesday show and announced that she had gone to the doctor and that she had to take three weeks off because of her um, Graves' disease. Uh, and so they were saying that the beehive got to her, <laughs> the power of the beehive. I know it's not true, but it was funny. <laughs> All right, last topic. Uh, so remember Philando Castro? He was the uh, young man that was killed by a police officer in 2016 at a routine traffic stop. Well, what he used to do was um, he would take money out of his own pocket for kids who couldn't afford lunch. Um, the school nutrition supervisor, you know, he would pay the bills for them. 
Now a uh, charity running his name has multiplied his mission by thousands, wiping out lunch debt for every student at all 56 schools in the Minnesota St. Paul public school where he worked. Um, they said that means a no parent of the 37,000 kids who eat meals at school need to worry about how to pay the overdue debt, according to you caring fundraiser that's in uh, Philando's name. They said Philando is still reaching out into his pockets and helping kids one by one. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That even in his death, awesome. he's still uh, caring, awesome. still carrying his legacy. Yeah, yeah. And if you think about it, that's what we did for uh, last year uh, for our Christmas kindness. We paid off some school debt. So it's good to see that people are still keeping that going. Because, again, I did not know. I told you, Ms. Parker, uh, Chica, I did not know that people didn't eat free for lunch if they didn't have the money. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Did yeah, not know yeah. that. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. I know you're staying on for movie reviews. Zayvon, thank you as always for joining us as a guest co-host, and I uh, hope you have a better week, okay? All right. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, hope you guys have a good weekend. Appreciate you, it. Brother. All right. We'll be right back after this. Yeah. 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 You know where I'm from. Yeah. yeah. Windy yeah. City. Yeah. Windy City. Yeah. yeah. You know where I'm from. Yeah. Shots, yeah. Shots, yeah. City. yeah, what up? Yeah, what That's up? Seven, seven, three. What up? What That's up? seven, no way. What up? What up? Six, three, oh, what up? Eight, one, five. We la 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 la. From the Midwest, homie, this is life. We do it the best, yeah, we do it right. We keep up in these streets, yeah, from day to night. Y'all know where we be, yeah, you know we rep that. That 312, yeah, that we the city. That 312, yeah, my head is with me. That 312, yeah, that we the city. That 312, yeah, my head is with me. From the shot, my dude Came in the game for the crown, my dude Know a couple goons from the south side I'll leave your mouth wide open And don't make the whole crowd move like rah, rah. With a round, my dude From the low end to the wild, wild too Hunters and these youngers, they be gunning and be stunting Ain't no pump, nobody smiling at you, huh? It'll go down, my dude Without a word or a sound, my dude South, out west, they will clown out too Bring out that cannon for nicks Demanding your shit while you panic and flinch You standing and pissing and vanishing Dipping, go bands with a chicken And laugh at that lick that they hit real quick These dudes Wild out too, huh? You know now, my dude. The look of the street is a frown, my dude. Don't work, you don't eat, stay from round, they food. The hunger, the feast of shot town, don't snooze. The heat of that bag, of that hammer, these tools. They using the war on the street, and there's few who live by that. Don't die by that, that's fact. It's shot rack, I'm from that. From that, from that. From the Midwest, homie, this is life. We do it the best, yeah, we do it right. We keep up in these streets, yeah, from day to night. Y'all know where we be, yeah, you know we rep that That 312, yeah, that we're the city That 312, yeah, my head is with me That 312, yeah, that we're the city That 312, yeah, my head is with me it's shot rack, my hitter. Yeah, the best city on the map, my hitters. Yeah. Know a couple spots that'll leave a fucking shot by the talent that we got. So watch them hitters. Yeah, watch yeah. We on top, my hitters. The top. women we got, they be hot. They be hot. Yeah. Traffic be moving, now stop. Now stop. Now stop. Middle now finger stop. to the cops. To the cops. Huh. It's different every block. every block. But we still cream of the crowd. Yeah. Summer's by the lake, keep a bucket feeling great. And them Jordan number eights, it'll pop. It'll pop. People move here by the flock to get the yeah. festivals, food in the spots. Forget the tickets be costing a lot. But it's the yeah. home of Jazz House be rock with the bulls the bears and white socks can't miss the yeah. legends and pips that we got with the yeah. best of the best in hip-hop okay. whether you like it or not yeah. it's the yeah. crucial yeah. conflict cycle drama and twister yeah. common kanye lupe lupe bump j fred g king louis do or die it's the shot the shot from the midwest homie this is life we do it the best yeah we do it right we keep up in these streets yeah from day to night Y'all know where we be, yeah, you know we rep that That 312, yeah, that we're the city That 312, yeah, my head is with me That 312, yeah, that we're the city That 312, yeah, my head is with me Show how to move 
like it's your only option so i'm how to go girl cause you do it flawless Proper. From poverty, I still finish college. Do it all, keep my face stay shiny. Cause your boy right here is a soldier. Back to the music, telling you why I do it. For my brother, his daughter, my dreams stick to it. I lost a few on the way, miss them all the time. But I keep the memories alive on the music. Thought I wouldn't do it, thought, thought I couldn't do it. Thought I wouldn't do it. Show them how to go, girl, cause you do it flawless She be like, he be like, my hitters be like Rep your town tonight, and we on Show them how it's done, when your back is in the corner Bet your dream is number one She be like, he be like, I be like Yeah, 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 yeah People telling me you only get better So don't stop, bro Got a dollar and a dream And no honey guarantees I'm gonna make it out this life That's cool with me Trust in my face And my beliefs Music therapy So I just wanna be the man Yeah, yeah, yeah They thought I wouldn't do it Thought I couldn't do it Thought I wouldn't do it Thought I couldn't do it Show them how to go, girl, cause you do it flawless She be like, he be like, my hitters be like Rep your town tonight, and we on Show them how it's done, when your back is in the corner But your dream is number one She be like, he be like, I be like Yeah, 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 yeah I came from nothing Shit. Had a goal to set, I had a name to get I turned pain to strength, I gave fame a grip I changed lanes to gain and my aims to live Had to show them how, call this tutorial Make history, this is story Cold niggas Satan, that's just adorable Went from poor and that shit's affordable All I need is my team now M More trees, more lean now I'm heating up, I got steam now It's real shit, it ain't a dream now I moved up and got paid quick Why H, why stayed with And this here look beautiful Like the baddest bitches I laid with They thought I wouldn't do it Thought, thought, thought that I would quit Can't take no loss Cause I'm a boss, tell all y'all bosses I'm the shit Y'all boys so off, but I'm a hit Got no time to talk, I'm getting rich Can't hear y'all talking like I'm deaf And I kill no coffin with the shit Show Why? how to move like it's your only option Show them how to go, girl Cause you do it flawless She be like, he be like My haters be like, rep your town tonight And we on Show them how it's done When your back is in the corner But your dream is number one she be like, he be like, I be like, yeah, 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 yeah. This is Achilles Peril checking in. You're listening to the only one and only Stephen Knight show. So uh, check us in. Appreciate it. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Our next guest is a music vet who is back with a brand new single. You got to hear it. It's called Where I'm Supposed to Be. Please help me welcome the very talented Fina Broussard. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited about your new music. But before we go there, let's go back a little bit. Um, I was reading up and I saw that you're, you're, you come from music, a musical family. Your father, mm -hmm. well, your mother was a jazz singer and your father uh, played the guitar and jazz big bands uh, and played with Anita right. Baker, Stevie Wonder, Donny Hathaway. Do you remember anything about those days? That that information is incorrect who wrote that. Um, I just want to clear that up. Who wrote that um, bio? bio. 
Okay. My, uh, my mother, my mother is a uh, is a jazz singer and okay. a piano player as well. My father does play guitar. My father charts music for big bands. Oh. And in that in that bio, what it was supposed to say, I grew up listening to my favorites such as Anita Baker, <laughs> Stevie Wonder, and Donny Hathaway. I mean, I've been trying to correct that for the longest, but I just, if I'm being totally honest, I have no idea where that came from. To say that my father, you know, played in those bands with those particular artists who were great. By the right, way. right, yeah. And, um, but but uh, some of the fondest uh, memories that I have of uh, of coming up in a musical household was um, my mother. I'm, I'm the last of six siblings, and my okay. mother, uh, my father would would both have gigs at night, and um, and when I would come home from school, my mother would would be getting ready for work, but she would have my older sister Tasha um, writing out the lyrics to. Um, you know, something like Aretha Franklin, you know, back in the day, you could take the needle and move it around and mm-hmm. go back and pause it and write this stuff out. And then on the <laughs> other hand, um, you know, I would come in and my father would be in the living room with his music stand up and he would be charting uh, Breezen or George Benson's, um, you know, Masquerade or something or whatever, whatever wow. the band was going to play that night for their gig or whatever. And just, um, again, like I said, being the last of six siblings, my all of my siblings had their favorites. My oldest brother, Joel, uh, kind of introduced me to uh, Parliament and P-Funk and Rick James and, of course, Prince. And okay. uh, my other brother, you know, was a lover of the time and Prince as well. My sister, Colette, absolutely loved um, the Jacksons and, and uh, Earth, Wind & Fire. And my sister, Marion, who uh, played clarinet, flute, and bass, you know, we loved um, the emotions. And my sister, Tasha, okay. turned me on to, like, Switch and all of those different things. So, I mean, and with my grandparents also, my, my mother's mother was um, – the minister of music at a church for many years. She played and, and sang beautifully. And my mother's father was a blues singer who did all of the, like, um, you know, old school uh, blues and jazz and stuff. So, I mean, again, and all of my mother's sisters, who, by the way, she has uh, seven. Wow. And uh, they all sing, you know. So that's the part of coming from a musically inclined family that, you know, kind of when you fast forward, it kind of, Get, puts that put, puts it in perspective of why I love music so much and why I was around it so much as a kid. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, you know, you were born in Houston. What is? How do you think that you developed? You know, as a singer, I, I think you know, coming up, you know, you you find artists that you like and you kind of imitate. But then, how do you? How did you know how to create your own sound that would be signature for you? Um. Well, well let, let me just say this for me personally. I don't think anything is new under the sun. We all take a little bit of uh, right. influences from this place and that place. And I would have to say, uh, what I what I what I most uh, listen to first mm-hmm. is harmony. And what, what taught my ear to do that, what I have to say, would be the emotions. I grew up absolutely loving the emotions and um, the Hawkins family, listening to um, um, Tremaine Hawkins and Lynette Hawkins, and listening yeah. to those uh, different records. Um, and 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 to give uh, credit to, I was speaking to Jody Watley uh, the other day on Twitter. She was telling me how much she loved the um, the new single where I'm supposed to be. And ironically, yeah, I when we were going in doing the song, when I was going in doing the song, what I kept, what I let the uh, engineer hear, um, the, the guy that was doing the vocals with me, I, kept, I, I made him pull a full a, a few um, Shalimar songs, you know, because I love okay. Jody Watley's uh, distinctive um, distinctive tone. Right. So I would have to say it was credited to some of those records and some of those artists that I was coming up listening to as a kid. You know, I, I, I love harmony. So I would say the emotions and Hawkins and Shalimar and all those great artists. Yeah, is what absolutely. kind of puts me in that space. And, of course, Aretha and those people too, you know, Whitney, all of that. And then so you moved to Atlanta to really pursue the career. Uh, why why did you pick Atlanta? Uh, it was very interesting. Um I went to college for a little bit. Went to after I left high school, I went to uh, Prairie View Annam University. Okay. Um, didn't things didn't quite work out, so I moved back home to Houston, which wasn't far. I was probably ten minutes down the street, but I'm I'm kind of exaggerating, <laughs> but about forty five minutes from my house. So okay. my mom uh, and and at that time I was I had kind of broken up with my high school sweetheart, and my mom knew I was a little depressed, so my mom yeah. had an opportunity to take a job in Denver, and uh, my mother was doing a place in Denver at the time called Pierre's, like a jazz club, so. Went down there, kind of got to hang out with some people or what have you, and it just wasn't quite working. I was in Denver for about maybe 10 months a year. Came back to Houston just for like maybe two months, and 
ironically, I love After Seven. At the time, I loved Babyfaces Productions and oh, yeah. L.A. Reid and all of those guys, um, Daryl Simmons. And at the time, After Seven had just come out with uh, with their record. And there was a McDonald's down the street from my house, and at that time, there was a station in Houston. Well, it's still popular now, 102, uh, Magic 102 FM. And they were having a remote show at the McDonald's down the street. So we okay. went down there to meet them, and I got a chance to talk to Melvin Edmonds. And Melvin talked about how Atlanta was becoming this mecca. And he was like, if you really mm-hmm. want to do something, you should move to Atlanta. So um, I had a friend whom I went to uh, high school with, Natalie Burks, who was an excellent piano player. We were trying to get our things done. So we decided to take a chance and move to Houston. We drove there and uh, uh, got there. And it, was a, it wasn't – it was – I'm not going to say that it didn't pan out the way it was supposed to be, but it worked the way it was supposed to work out. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. Got a chance to go. We looked on the back of a couple of records that um, that the uh, whole Babyface production, the whole LaFace production was doing, and we found this address at this um, studio where we were supposed to have a meeting with uh, Gene Griffin. And uh, Gene Griffin at the time was managing uh, Guy and Teddy Riley and a couple other artists, and ne- we missed him by five minutes. And ironically, there was another studio next door and we were, and there were all these pictures of the artists on the door that, that, mm-hmm. that had worked in the studio. So we're peering in the window, and uh, this guy walks up to the door. And at the time, like I said, I moved to Atlanta back in early 1990. I was barely 21. I wasn't even 21 yet. I was still early 20s or whatever. And um, the guy comes to the door, and he says, hey, how you doing? We're like, well, we were supposed to have a meeting with somebody next door. We see these pictures on the door. We're, we're singers. We're from Houston. We're trying to get a start. And and he's like, well, come on in. And we kind of stopped. We was like, you know, we're not going to come in there. We have to do tricks for trades or anything. He's like, no, right. no, no, no. Exactly. So, I mean, so you're talking about being at the right place at the right time. So yeah. he takes us in the back. And back there in the back room, there's this grand piano. And there's a guy back there in the back by the name of Dennis Austin. And the guy, Cat, introduces us. And we tell him the same thing we told Cat about us trying to come and, um, you know, get a career started mm-hmm. and make some contacts and network. So he has Natalie go to the piano. And I remember singing vision of love, you know, and oh, wow. he said, okay, wow. So he talks about this guy, I'm talking about Dennis Austin. So Dennis introduces himself as Bobby Brown's musical director. Mm-hmm. And um, we start talking and I said, I'm from Texas. We're both from Texas. And he's like, wow. He said, I have a, my son lives in Lubbock. And I said, well, that's ironic. My mother's from Lubbock. My family's from Lubbock. Um, well, my mother grew up in Lubbock. And he mentions his son's name. And I said, that's my, uh, that's my cousin's son. So from that point on, um, wow. it was really wild. He said, um, well, I'm, Bobby's going out in a few weeks, and, um, you know, I'll call you guys. And Natalie got a little impatient. You know, Natalie was the only child used to being up with her mother and father. She didn't think it was going to happen. And um, Natalie had her parents come down and get her. And about two days later after she left, I was really upset about that, but two days after she left, I got the call. And it, wow. it started with Bobby Brown doing that, and it just kind of uh, snowballed into – uh, working with Pebbles, being able to go in and, and mm-hmm. demo with Babyface. And, and it just one thing after the other just kind of picked up. So it just, I would say probably after a four-month stint when I first got to Atlanta, that's when it happened. I mean, and ever since then, it's been kind of, you know, rolling like that. Been rolling, yeah. And I know Nell is probably kicking herself. Why did I move? Why did well, I you move? know, <laughs> yeah, I, I think she felt bad, but she had an opportunity to do some other great things. That's too. good. You know, she had the opportunity to do some things, you know. So your first yeah. popular single was the Minnie Ripperton, uh, you remade the song Inside My Love, which was featured on the Lust Jones soundtrack. Everybody loved that soundtrack, and, and uh, definitely you're part of that. How did you feel when you, when you, you know, record the song and it's put on that soundtrack? What, obviously, you've been in Atlanta, you've been grinding, doing the work, and then now you have this single here. What, what, was, what was going through your mind at that time? Well, you know, I, I almost missed that opportunity. Um, wow. I had just uh, signed with So So Death, and uh, Jermaine calls me late one night, probably about maybe one thirty, two o'clock in the morning. He says, hey, uh, we're working on this soundtrack. And at the time, I was uh, the Trey Lorenz was, my, was, one, was one of my mentors who actually mm-hmm. helped me get the demo, helped me do the demo to sign with So So Death. And uh, he and I were roommates at the time, and uh, Jermaine said, we have this um, – the soundtrack that we're working on, and uh, I want to know if you want to do this song by Minnie Ripperton inside my love. And I said, mm, I don't know. And he said, Well, the catch to it is, you know, Trina, we, we, we need an answer because the song has to be done tomorrow and has to be turned in oh, you know, wow. by tomorrow night. You know, this is the last song on the soundtrack, and I, I, I want to put you on it. Mm-hmm. So I get up and I go across the hall and knock on Trey's uh, door, and I said, Trey, Jermaine just called me, and he wants me to do 
this song. And I was like, I don't, I, I don't really want to do it. I said, I can't hit those notes like Minnie Ripson. And Trey was like, listen. And at the time, you know, soundtracks are really huge. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, they are huge. Just mm-hmm. got an interest. Just wasn't even thinking about it like that. He was like, yeah. listen, you know, we're not going to turn this down. He was like, you don't have to sing it like Minnie. Just do what you do, and let's let's start putting this stuff together. So I have to credit Jermaine and Trey. Trey got on the phone and put the uh, musicians together. Got put, you know, put, um, you know, kind of created the whole session for me. So we go in the next day about I don't know, maybe ten o'clock, eleven o'clock in the morning, and the song is done. Um, I, I'm, they 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 record the the instrumental parts. The musicians do do their part, and mm-hmm. then I go in. I think I sing the song of knock things out in probably about maybe four hours. And we got the songs, uh, you know, done before the deadline. So wow. it, 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 I would have to say because of Jermaine Dupree and because of Trey convincing me uh, to not turn it down or, or to not necessarily not turn it down, but to dismiss my fear exactly. on doing it. Um, yeah. Yeah. it. It worked itself out. And I have to uh, say, you know, that was 1996, 97. And here we are, 2018. And it's still, uh, you know, it's still appreciated yeah. you know, by so many people. And I really appreciate that, you know. Most definitely. Most really definitely. Do. One thing I do have to shout out, because I love this song, Here We Go Again, by Aretha Franklin, and you helped mm-hmm. co-write that song. I love that song. I've always loved that song since I was, I was younger, and so when I read wow. that, I was like, oh, wow, wow. And how yeah. was that like when you got yeah. that placement? Say it again? How was it like getting that placement with Aretha Franklin? It was absolutely beautiful. I mean, we yeah. at that time, I had been going to Jermaine's house, uh, doing a lot of a demo work for him anyway. Mm-hmm. He said, listen, I have an opportunity uh, to get on this Aretha Franklin album. And he gave us a track. I said, okay, Trey and I are going to go home and do something too. We'll be back. And we came back in. And I just I just kind of like slightly demoed it because I know Aretha would put Aretha spin on it. Right. I didn't know that they would, uh, you know, keep my background vocals and all of that, which I'm very, very grateful oh, for. I mean, uh, it's, it's, an honor, it's an honor to say that you've been able to work for the queen. You know what I'm saying? I, I grew true. up with Aretha. You know, I was hearing Aretha from the womb. My mother is a, is a true Aretha Franklin, um, you know, <laughs> fan and, and that's all I pretty much grew up with in the house besides the emotions. I would have to say Aretha Franklin the emotions was, you know, I was listening to them before I came out of the room. So it was just an honor to be able to, you know, write for her. And, and, and I asked Jermaine, I said, well, what did Aretha have to say about the song? He said, she asked, <laughs> who's singing on the track? And he said, she told her who I was. So I said, you know, you know, Miss Aretha, it, 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 if she took it, I'm, I'm assuming that she was pleased. And I just appreciate it. That's the part yeah, of the issue no. that, you know, can yeah. never be, you know, taken away. And it I can't. appreciate it. It can't. Well, let's fast forward to today. Um, before we talk about the single, talk about the music industry. It's changed a lot, obviously, um, since, you know, when, you know, back in those days we were just talking about. What has been the biggest change? Or, and a lot of people feel like the music has, kind of, especially in the R&B world and, and urban world, it's, it's kind of gone downhill. And I don't know if that's mm-hmm. necessarily the case, but... Because I felt that I still think there's some artists out there that are still bringing it, but I think the appreciation for it is not as strong as it once was back when the soundtracks were popping and all that. What for you? What is it like being an artist who's gone through all that, who's had success, and today? What what, do, what are your what's your view on the music industry today? Today, there's three parts to that for me. Okay. Um, first, let me just say this. Um, there's a lot of smart artists out here. I would, mm-hmm. I would give them that and because yeah. of, as far as how, because the industry has changed tremendously, there's a lot of new ways to kind of do it yourself. If you, mm-hmm. if you, it's hard work, you know what I'm saying? It's not easy, but I, I've seen a lot of successful people do it themselves, you know, Correct. and mm-hmm. um, uh, as, as far as the independent route, you know what I'm saying? Through social media, it's a, it's a great platform if you know how to use it. You know what I'm saying? Um, secondly, as far as the music, I, this is this is my challenge, and this is what I say to a lot of producers. And I know a lot, a of, lot of great producers. I, I I always say this. I think it's a disgrace. And I and let, well, let me just say this. <laughs> Evolution is inevitable. Things change. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Everything doesn't stay the same. But great music will never be able to be dismissed. Period. That's true. I think That's what's true. happened with some of the. Um, I think what's happened with some of the new music, some as, as far as trap, and by the way, I do like some trap music. I'm not going to lie about that. I mean, but I think anything that's not really good to some people, once you program it a lot, you, you just it just sinks in, you know? Mm-hmm. But this is the challenge that I have with the producers that I work with. I'm like, listen, it's a disgrace to 
leave all of that behind that, that Maurice White did, even Prince, you know what I'm saying? They were musical yeah. people, and these are stuff that we still listen to. I mean, if you really listen to the radio, I mean, you're still listening to the top ten. I'm not talking about the new stations, but I'm talking about, um, you know, some of the old stations that you can right. still hear, the production by, by uh, Jim, Jam and Terry Lewis, the SOS stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying you have to copy anything, but it's like, you know, just, if, if the drum machines break down, if the keyboards break down, if those, if you don't have uh, the background vocals that's flown in as far as being able to push a button, if that stuff breaks down, we still need to be able to play. You know what I'm exactly. saying? I think it's just, mm-hmm. you know, to take real musicianship out of it is, because, you know, music is math. And I think um, I think to be able to take the real musicianship away from it, it's, it's doing a disservice to, um, to, to, to yourself also. And it's nothing wrong with a drum machine. I mean, things happen, you know, if, if things change. But I think... Um, just real music is it's, it's just it's hard to convince people uh, not to go against the grain. And what I mean by going against the grain is everybody sounds alike. Everybody wants to do what's exactly. working. I'm like, uh-huh. listen, you, you you can't be afraid to be different. You just it, it's it's nothing wrong with us. But I can guarantee you, you know, people probably thought Prince was weird and he was strange, mm-hmm. but Prince, you know, did his own thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Nobody sounds like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Nobody sounds like. LTD, nobody sounds like the Commodores. Everybody had their own, their own particular sound. Own. You know, when, yeah. you can, when, when, you, when you turn on the radio when I was a kid, we didn't think of it as being black music or white music. We heard Hall and Oates and we heard uh, the guy sing, um, I guess you wonder where I've been. When you hear that, mm-hmm. we didn't know it was white. We just knew it was great music. So, exactly. you know, it's, that's the problem that I'm having with nobody wants to stretch. Everybody wants to stay safe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Stay safe. And that's, that's that it. kind of that kind of irritates me a little bit, you know? No, I get it. I get it. A little it. bit. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about this single, Where I'm Supposed to Be, and you describe it as an autobiographical journey uh, that tells your life story. Tell us about it. Um, uh, again, in the beginning of the interview, we talked about how I grew up in Houston, you mm-hmm. know, listening to the great music. We travel with my, with my parents out of town every summer. And, you know, when you're riding um, – you know, riding a car, you know, you get to hear different varieties of music and stuff. You know, we listen to country western, we listen to rock, we listen to pop, we listen to jazz, we listen to gospel, and all of it had a different feel and a different effect from it, a, from it, a different impact. And, um, you know, just uh, I had somebody laughing the other day. I was telling them when I, when I was growing up and I would practice at home, the vacuum cleaner was my microphone and my mic stand, or the or the screwdriver would be my cordless mic. You know, right. so I mean, just those memories of uh, yeah. you know, just those memories at home of just singing and just you know not being afraid, no inhibitions in the way at the time. You know, just free. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, you get a little older and you see um, you see the ridicule of people that's really trying, and you know, it's just it it gets a little tough. And then after I left So So Deaf, you know, after after leaving that particular uh, era of um of the music industry, I took a break and mm-hmm. I went to Motown. And then after that didn't work, I just really sat back and just uh, battled with some convictions, uh, went through some tough financial times and went to pay space an eviction, um, which was absolutely devastating at that yeah, point in imagine. my life. You know, just, mm-hmm. you know, but, but thing is, you know, sometimes you have to be able to work through the shame to get exactly. to, the, to the, to get to the greater side. Uh-huh. Um, uh, you know, just went through a host of things. And then, you know, once you realize, once you once you once you get a chance to sit in the dark and be quiet and just really sit still so you can hear yourself think, and then you we, once you realize a lot of things you're like it's a lot, most of the stuff is all in your head you know what I'm saying it's like you conjure up a lot of stuff you have to be able to you know flush it out and and just get grown about it you know so right. just get grown and say you know if bumps and bruises come what are you going to do about it you're going to sit in it or you're going to move around and make some stuff happen so that's pretty much what um what, um, you know, where I'm supposed to be, you know, and, and what I mean by where I'm supposed to be, I think everybody in life, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or different, whatever's happening at that very moment, it is what it is. Exactly. And it's not to say that you don't work towards, if something is bad at that moment, it's not to say that you don't work towards it to get something greater. And if you reach the victory, whatever you were supposed to have, you're where you're supposed to be. And where I'm supposed to be right now is, 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 um, Doing what I was called to do, and that's music. You know what I'm saying? I stopped doing it for a minute, you know, and I'm, right, I'm, yeah. I'm at a peace. I have yeah. a peace of mind about it now, and it's okay. You know, I don't let little small things. It's something about being grown. It's something about getting grown. Stuff starts to roll off your back like water. So that's, they say. that's, that's just they where say. I am now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's just where yeah. I am now, you know? Wow. That's, that's pre- that pretty much sums it up for me with that. 
It's truly been a pleasure speaking with you. Can you tell us where we, first of all, where can we buy where I'm supposed to be, and also where can we keep up with you and everything you have going on? I, uh, you can, I have a, a Facebook page, which is just my first and last name, Trina Broussard. I'm on Facebook. I have an Instagram, which is my first and last name, Trina Broussard, as well as um, Twitter. And you can also uh, get the single, uh, where I'm supposed to be on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, and all musical, um, musical download outlets. And get it awesome. Awesome. And I am um, embarking on uh, finishing up a um, finishing up some. Well, I have some more singles coming um, throughout awesome. the summer, Good. and I'm doing uh, the, Jadali, uh, the Catalina Jazz Club in LA on the 25th of, of March. As far Everybody, as check it out. I got to ask you one more thing before we go, Rashawn Patterson. I was asked to ask about you all's relationship. Uh, that is family. Uh, Rasan has family, taught yeah. me a lot. Rasan is my brother. Rasan mm-hmm. is my brother. He's taught me a lot. Um, we've been through a lot as far as, uh, you know, how brothers and sisters fight. Right, but right. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, much respect to him. A lot of my um, a lot of my learning and how to, because a lot of shows that I do in the past, a lot of shows that I've done in the past, I didn't uh, really have background figures, but Rasan has shown me how to command the stage without needing that. It's It's tough, but... It, it once you started once I started doing it and learning from him it got a little easy. I've learned about uh, the quality of um, wanting your songs to be right, not to be over analytical, but you just want great quality stuff. Exactly. You know what I mean? yeah. Overall, a great guy, but like I said, just straight, just straight family. I learned a lot from him. Just straight yeah. family. Yeah. I thought I'd shout out your, uh, your new single, so I thought that was pretty dope. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty dope. Yeah. Well, listen, yeah. Trader Broussard, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I wish you nothing but continued success. Keep. I'm glad you're thank back you. doing this, doing what you do best. And uh, for more information, go to our website, thestevenisshow.com. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, Trader. Thank you. All right.
Hello, beautiful people. It's your girl, Monifa, and you're listening to The Stephen Knight Show. Welcome back to The Stephen Knight Show. Our next guest is founder and CEO of Miami-based Achille Apparel and says that he was inspired to create and design something different. Now, Achille Apparel was founded in 2016, and tonight we welcome the founder and CEO, Ray Achille, to tell us more. Welcome to the show. Hey, what's what? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for taking the time out your busy schedule. You doing good? Yeah, I'm doing good. How you feeling? I can't complain. I can't complain. You know, it's interesting. I was reading a, a, a article the other day, and it was it was entitled "Americans Don't Want Bosses Anymore." And I think it was talking about how a lot of people are transitioning to entrepreneurialism and ship. And so. Um, Obviously, you've done that, and you're doing it in a big way. Tell us about what made you decide to become an entrepreneur, and, uh, you know, what, 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 was, what, what, what was it that made you decide this is what you wanted to do? Um, I, I started figuring out I wanted to do what I wanted to do when um, I started, found out that I had a passion for fashion. So pretty much I started gravitating into this trendy stuff just from shoes to uh, pants to shirt. I just noticed that I, my creativity and my creativity and, like, my mindset was just always set on piecing, like, clothing together from hats to shoes to whatever it was. So then um, I just told myself I want to just get started on, on fashion, and um, I just I just put everything together. And I read that, that, you know, prior to this, you know, you had gone to school, and you actually went to fireman school. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. That's right. Wow, wow, wow. So what – so – did you ever become a fireman, or, or did you? What, what was the story behind that? So with that, man. So the quick story behind that was, um, I actually went to fire school, completed all my courses. I actually thought I was on track to be a fireman, but obviously everything don't work. Uh, plans don't always go as planned. Right. So, um, I had to make a plan. I had to make a plan B, escape plan, real quick. So actually, like as I mentioned, I actually finished up everything, but it just didn't work out for me. So. That's, that was funny that you mentioned bosses um, want to be bosses. That was the title of the thing you were just reading, of the article? Yeah, yeah it, was, it was Americans No Longer Want to Want Bosses. And, you know, I've interviewed a lot of people right, on, this, so. on, on this show, who, and I was talking about this earlier today. A lot of people I've interviewed on this show how, you know, they even, a lot of in some cases, you know, started, got corporate jobs and, you know, were doing well, but they right. just felt a desire to do something more, decided to be their own boss and to, you know, yeah. Take it to their hands. Yeah, talk about it. it but no, it, it's not. It's not just about that either. Don't don't get me wrong. Now, some people need a boss. You get what I'm saying? Right. Some people That's need true. to be told what to do, when to do, and how and how to yeah. do it. Everybody can't do stuff on their own because then right. it, it comes with a lot of discipline and responsibility. But for my, I could only speak for myself. Um, I wasn't happy with being told what to do, where to go, how to do it, when to do it. I wasn't. I, I didn't like waking up a certain time to be somewhere where I didn't really yeah, want to be. So exactly. I, so knowing that, so knowing that, I, I I took it forth that um, I had to make change, and and that and that comes within yourself. Mhm. Mhm. That's true. That's true. And like you said, everyone can't be a boss. Everybody can't be their own boss. It takes a lot of self discipline. Everybody sure. can be. For sure. It, is, it, is, it sure does. I'm trying to tell you. You're right. It sure does. So what's the message behind Achille Apparel? Um, the message behind Achilles Peril is pretty much um, the name. My name obviously is Randy Achilles, so the brand's name is after my last name, Achilles Apparel. So um, if it follows my last name or whatnot, and I just want I just want I want everybody to understand that. And you could start anything; doesn't matter where it comes from or how it comes from. You could start anything. You just gotta put your mindset to it. It's a lifestyle. It's a culture. So you just gotta put your uh, your mind to it, and you could push. You can push and do anything you want to do. That's the message that I want everybody to understand. So were you were surprised when you started seeing celebrities and athletes wearing your hats? You started off with hats. Were you surprised when you saw that? Um, it's not that I was surprised, but it, it kind of took me, uh, caught me off guard because this is what I envisioned. This is what I wanted. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. when I seen that, when, when I when when I started seeing it come into motion, I was just like, wow, this is. It it, it more made me smile that your dreams come true. You get right. what I'm saying? Not that yeah. they're, that they're actually weren't it. It just makes me more smile that your dreams come true and that everything that you manifested is coming into reality. It's all becoming one. 
Exactly. Yeah, that's a good way of because it. Because when you start out to do something, you expect to be successful. And so when you see it, it's just, well, you're shocked that it happened so soon because, I mean, it was, you were founded exactly. in 2016, and then already you have Odell Beckham and, you know, Prince who was on our show uh, recently, Von Miller. Right. You know what I mean? Were you shocked when you saw these right. people right. like that soon? Were you shocked by that? That 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 I'll say yes. I was pretty shocked that everybody yeah. was gravitating to it so quickly because when it's organic, you gotta understand it takes time. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right, um, right. Yeah, it it takes time. So um, I I was pretty shocked the way it worked out. Mhm. Yeah. Well, that's but when you I know. Am, but I am thankful. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I said, but that's when you know that you're doing what you're meant to do because when it comes so successful right. and there yeah, you go, yeah, it, it, yeah. yeah. It, it just it just clicked. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. Hey, shout out to my boy Prince. He's doing real good for himself, man. I appreciate yeah, it. I'm, yeah, I'm proud of him. Yeah, he was on the show uh, not too long ago, and he he's a trip. <laughs> he's a trip. I'll say that. But uh, yeah, yeah, we right, definitely right, appreciate right. Oh, it. Man, he's a great guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He seemed like it. Full of personality. That's my. Big, exactly. Exactly. So let's talk about some of the uh, the merchandise taglines. You have zero friends, savage lit. How do you come up with those with the phrases? Um, pretty much what we do is, um, me and my partner, we, we call it a dead period where we just sit down and we just come up with plenty of ideas and, um, phrases or names that people could see, relate, understand, and make it catchy at the same time. You get Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So pretty much, um, zero friends, zero friends just don't mean you really don't have no zero friends. That just means you don't associate with everybody. You don't associate with everything. It is more about family than friends. So it's I don't want people to un- see the word zero friends and be like, oh, they, like nobody's their friends. It's just them or nothing. No, it doesn't mean that. It just means like um, you just you just don't relate with everybody. You just you just don't um, you, you it's just more family over friends pretty much. And with savage, yeah. every savage could go two and and with savage it 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 could go two ways. It could be for a good thing or a bad thing. So you could be like, man, I'm a beast. I'm a savage at what I do at my career, at my art and craft, or you just could be like, oh, man, um, this basketball player is a savage to whatever he do. So pretty much people could just correlate that word with a lot of things. So I felt like that was a good word or phrase that we could use, that, most definitely. Um, people could use over and over again. Most definitely, most definitely. Now, we all know, um, you know, a lot of businesses, when they start, you know, obviously, you know, you, you achieve success relatively soon, which is awesome. You know, like again, that, to me, that's just confirmation that you're doing what Thank you're supposed you. to do. I appreciate you, it. Thank m- you. No doubt. But um, what, did, what was maybe one of the challenges or one of the hurdles you had to overcome to, to reach the success? Getting started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, that was my biggest fear. My, my, my biggest fear is just getting started because um, a lot of people and a lot of startup companies are, mm-hmm. still, are scared of failure. And right. they don't want to see that. Um, they don't want them to see that their business, uh, not their business, but their ideals just don't take off. So pretty much, they're scared that people won't support them or think that their ideal is trash or garbage. You get what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why yep. a lot of people don't start up because of, of that fear. But fear don't really exist. That's just all something that you put in your head for you uh, for excuse not to do something. Exactly. So that's that's the biggest. That's the biggest. Uh, hardest part of start um getting started is just to get started <laughs> if that makes right, sense right i was reading the other day right. actually right. fear fear is all about ego you're afraid that if you put it out right. and, and it doesn't work that that that's your ego it hits your ego did, did you did you did you ever battle that or, or deal with that or or, or did you yeah, okay. already know that from I, the I job deal with it. i deal with it I, I deal with it today because sometimes i come out with two three designs and i'm like man if i push this one and people don't respond to it how I want to. Like, damn, just like what you don't like me or you don't like the design. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But which one is it? So, right. 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 So you just uh, it, which one is it? Like, talk to me. But um, <laughs> you just gotta put that. You just gotta put. You just gotta put that to the side. Your pride to the side, and just you got. You just gotta also understand that everybody's not gonna like everything. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, exactly. Um, you just gotta. Just, you you just gotta put it out there in the world and just see how people respond to it. There's and that's another thing. That's um since you mentioned that. There's no right way to start. So mm-hmm. when, once you put it, once you put it, there's no there's no blueprint on how to start. When I say get started, I'm gonna elaborate on that a little bit more. When I say get started, because you could say, okay, I'm gonna put out three shirts, and then from there I'm gonna take off, and it don't work like that. What happened? Those three shirts flop. Now right. you're discouraged. You don't want to go any further. 
So mm-hmm. once you just get started, people will respond and things will start working out, work their way out, and then you're going to know which avenue and what to do and not to do. And that's, yeah. that's, and that's some great, solid advice right there. Most definitely, most definitely. Now, we talked about, you know, uh, you being founded in Miami, and I, I read um, yeah. that you talked about the culture of Miami. You know, N- Miami is just like right. New York where it's a melting pot of different ethnic- ethnicities and cultures. How did that – how was that influenced right. into your – the product, your products that you do? Um, it, it's pretty good because just from Miami, you just – like you say, you got a lot of culture, different cultures and backgrounds here. So um, you get to touch a whole lot you – you get to touch a whole lot of different demographic of people instead of right. just one type of per, people or persons. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. you got your Cubans, your Colombians, your Hispanics, your Haitians, your Caucasians. Then you got your assholes, your niggas, your ignorant people. Right, right. So, it is right. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. You, you, you got to make sure everything. So you need, you need, you need, you need them all pretty much. You need them mm-hmm. all to make you tough. You need tough skin in it. So you need them all. So it was pretty. I'm, if if it could be anywhere else, it's either here or L.A. or New York where I want to get started because that's the that's the great battleground uh, city to to keep to keep you organic and keep you humble. So exactly. I'm actually pretty happy. Um, it's all started in Miami. That's, that's dope. That's dope. So what's, what can we expect in the future? I know that you have T-shirts now and you have uh, book bags and other things like that. What else? What else do you have coming down the right. pipeline? Man, man, a bunch of stuff. I just wish for myself nothing but growth. But just to give you a few hints, um, so we got, of course. Of course, we're out the season, but we have Scullies coming up. We got mm-hmm. um, we got windbreakers. We got more designs of shirts. We got different we got different hats coming out. We got um, we're gonna do and this is the one for the ladies. We got bathing suits and we got okay. uh, Achilles Apparel kids also coming out. So those two oh, things no. I'm really excited for and um, yeah, it, it and it gives the brand just a whole different spin and a, another flavor. Exactly, exactly. Well, listen, I'm very motivated by what you've been able to accomplish in this amount of time and the fact that you're still grinding, still doing it. What advice would you give anyone, and not necessarily in, you know, retail or clothing line, but what would you advice would you give anyone who wants to step out, become an entrepreneur, and don't know the, the first step? What advice would you give them? Don't, the, the greatest, I'll give them a couple of gems, a couple of advice. Um, one, one I'll say, don't be scared to ask questions. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the more questions you ask, it, the, the, the more knowledge you get. So um, don't be scared. Don't don't look at, don't be so prideful and be like, man, I'm the one to ask this person. I don't want to bother them. Close mouths don't get fed at the end of the day. That's you get right. what I'm saying? So That's right. If, uh, start, hang, start, start hanging around people that get it. So if you in music, start hanging around people that into music. Don't hang around... Don't if you're into music, don't ha- don't hang around people that's into uh that that like cooking food or like that's right. like musicians. No, that's not your craft. Hang mm-hmm. around like minded people. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. so so your mind and your creativity is your creativity is always flowing. And um I I also say, um, do your research. A lot of people don't do their research behind what they want to do. Do your research because um there's been plenty of people before that already have done it and failed. And they come out and tell us their stories of what to do and not to do. So pretty much, it's already dummy proof. You just gotta go out there exactly. and research and read for yourself. You you already gotta research and read for yourself what to do and don't do. And once you do that, you're gonna have you're gonna have a, a, a solid ground and foundation to start on. Ray Killer, man, I thank you so much, so much for taking time out your busy schedule and spitting this knowledge to us. Let us know where we can purchase the clothes. I'm already on the website right now. Got stuff in my in my car, <laughs> my shopping cart. <laughs> but where can we uh, go That's check out the clothes? It. And where can we uh, follow you on social media? Okay, so for social media on Instagram, you can follow me at Achille Apparel. That's A C H I L L three numeric three apparel A P P A R E L, and the website is Achille A C H I L L three dot com. And here's a special treat. You can use code A3 at the end of your um, checkout, and it'll save you about 15 to 20% on your entire purchase. Can't beat it. Can't beat it. Well, listen, for more information Can't about Achilles. Ke- <laughs> exactly. For more information yeah. about Achilles Apparel, go to our website, thestevenatshow.com, and uh, we'll be right back after this. We can book a fight and leave tonight, yeah. Where you going? No, I love you so much. I love you 
Yeah. Baby, where you going? You know I love you so much. You know I love you so much. Yeah. You know what's on? Real special with us. Real special with us. Real special with us. You and me, we all that. I love you like I know you love me back. Yeah. You love me back. Yeah. And I'll do anything for you.
Articulate Podcast, and you are listening to the Stephen Knight Show. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Adam, what's going on? How's it going? Good, good, Stephen. How are you? I cannot complain at all. I cannot complain. I know you and Chica have a lot to talk about with Oscars from yesterday and uh, movie view, so I'll let y'all take it away. Uh, sure thing. So I did see the 90th Academy Awards last night. Chica, did you get a chance to watch it? So, uh, Stephen, earlier, Adam, that I did not see the ceremony because we were uh, wrapping up um, the slot film, which uh, my movie, in which we were working on for the past year, is finally done. So I didn't get to see any of the oh, ceremony, great. but I did, I did see the, the backstage interviews. Okay. Well, I actually did watch, uh, and usually I kind of catch the highlights afterwards. I try not to go through the whole thing, but... Um, it was uh, actually pretty entertaining. I know there were some low points and uh, had some laggy parts, but uh, Jimmy Kimmel did a great job. He was hosting again, and um, the everything went off pretty well. You know, there was no envelope uh, issues this year, and um, the performances I really liked. So uh, one of the things I do like about the Oscars uh, that I think are one of the more entertaining parts are when uh, each song is performed uh, for the best song of the year and this year we had a good uh good good mix mary j blige uh performed for uh her song in mudbound which she was also nominated uh for an oscar for uh, mystery of love uh in call me by your name uh, remember me from coco stand up for something from marshall this is me from uh, the greatest showman so all of those performances except for mystery of love was kind of um kind of just a subtle, and uh, the artist, Jan Stevens, is more of an indie artist, so it's kind of a muted uh, performance, but Mighty River, they did a really good job, and uh, Remember Me, um, which actually ended up winning the uh, Oscar for the best song, done by uh, Gael Garcia, Miguel, and Natalia LaForacade, uh, did a really good job, so if you get a chance to check those out, uh, the Coco one had a very big, uh, obviously, Mexico theme and the Day of the Dead and things like that. So uh, that was the highlight for me. And then just the awards. So I didn't get a chance to catch everything, uh, watch all the Best Picture nominees, unfortunately. But the Shape of Water, which was kind of uh, – it trended into three billboards at the beginning of the season, and then Shape of Water kind of took a lot of other awards, and it was favored to win. So that won, and that's the Guillermo del Toro movie about the girl who has a romance with uh, this kind of fish creature. And, so, Adam, uh, yes. I have an actual question. Because I, I was looking at the roster and how it actually panned out. We were kind of on point with what we were thinking about when we were talking about the films and how they were going to do. We were kind of on point about who the winners were going to be. Yeah, yeah, and it was, it was interesting because there was no real surprises. Uh, Gary Oldman, uh, I think we all knew, was going to get Darkest Hour, and he's he's been uh, nominated a few times, and he's a, he's an uh, Academy favorite and a fan favorite. That's Francis McDormand from Three Billboards and Sam Rockwell from Three Billboards, which uh, I think you agreed those they were both great performances. Mm-hmm. Um, Get Out, getting the original screenplay. I was really happy to see that. Uh, there was a lot of competition in that field, so uh, I'm glad uh, Jordan Peele I was, that. Um, I was really happy about uh, Alice and Jenny winning the uh, Best Supporting Actress for I, Tanya, simply because we don't really get to see her go all out in a role. I mean, she's done great roles, but she's even explained that this was a gift to her. Like, this role was given to her just so that she can go out on a limb. And she did that in spades. And I'm so glad it worked out for her and that she was able to win this award. Yeah, I agree. I still haven't seen I, Tanya. I am going to check it out. But um, she even had a funny speech where when she got up to the podium, she said, it was all me, and started laughing. Everyone was laughing because you know, <laughs> everyone always thanks everyone else. So she had her little moment, uh, but I'm glad that she's in it. Uh, I've actually been watching The West Wing uh, recently, 
And, you know, of course, she's one of the main characters, and then she does a great job there. And Do me a favor before you, before you actually go see it. Before you go see I, Tanya, look up footage of Tanya Harding's mother before you go, okay. just so you can see that, and then watch Allison Janney's performance. She did not have any material to rehearse this woman to. Oh, wow. This is, this is okay. off the cuff. She didn't meet her until after they finished filming. Tell me what you wow. think after you do that. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely take it, uh, check it out. Um, and then everything else was kind of on par. Coco winning anime feature that was expected, uh, a few other awards along the way. One that uh, not surprised me, but I guess as I was learning into more of the smaller uh, awards or the other categories, that Kobe Bryant now has an Oscar. Um, yes, he does. He actually he created an animated short, uh, and he created the story and kind of the outline, and then he actually had a – a Disney, uh, one of the classic Disney animators uh, do the animations for it. So, uh, yeah, he, he went up to the stage and, you know, uh, it's funny when you see Kobe Bryant next to all these Hollywood types, he looks like a giant. Uh, and just when you see him on the court, he's normal height because all basketball players are almost, or almost all of them are tall. So it's it fun mm-hmm. to see kind of the, the difference uh, in the heights when he's walking up and he's still, you know, he's still tall, obviously. So um, that was a nice little pleasant surprise. But, um, yeah, everything was on par. The, the event went well. There were no problems. They even did uh, a – whoever gave the shortest speech got a free jet ski, so they did a Price is Right kind of joke theme there. Uh, <laughs> and someone did go home with a jet ski, uh, so it was kind of a fun little um, turnabout. But great job by everyone. Uh, again, no, no real surprises. I think everyone was on point. I know Shape of Water has been one of those movies that people either love or that they, they hate. Uh, I'll, I'll check it out, obviously, just because it's one, and I'll I'll let you know my opinion at a later time once I do. But uh, it's an interesting premise, and you know, congratulations to everyone. They had a, they had a good night with no no real issues or surprises. And I guess I, I guess overall, with with all the winners, uh, I am satisfied. I mean, I, I'm not really upset about any of the winners, and um, I don't feel like the Academy snubbed anyone. Um, even though Get Out didn't win Best Picture, um, I kind of sort of knew that they wouldn't, just simply because um, last year, Best Picture of the Year Mm. was an African-American film. I just didn't think that they were going to do that again two years in a row. And um, rightfully so, it went to uh, The Shape of Water. I really thought that they deserved it. It was really a good film um, with an awesome story. Uh, yeah, and the tour did an awesome job. And also, uh, you know, and it's awards, and people have to realize, or you know, you kind of realize as time goes on that not everything's a, a kind of a binary best picture or not best picture. You know, people, the Academy, Hollywood loves Guillermo del Toro. They were going to pick him um, uh, for best act, uh, best director anyway, just because he's such you know in the industry they love him. So I think that also factors into it. There's a lot of uh, outside parameters. I know people were a little shocked when the Florida Project, which I haven't seen but I want to see, wasn't nominated for best picture. And once you realize A24, who's the production company or the distribution company for the Florida Project also did Lady Bird. They put all their mm-hmm. kind of campaign money into Lady Bird, so that would give a nomination. Mm-hmm. And you kind of see the external factors that kind of shape, I, I assume, all awards shows, but especially the Oscars. And, and I don't think that your average person really realizes what goes into getting a film nominated to winning. There's mm-hmm. a lot of campaigning that has to happen for uh, the production house. They really have to get behind the film and push it and do the circuit, and that circuit is all the other little small uh, uh, award ceremonies Mm -hmm. that happen that they have to push the movie to, Um, the film festivals where they can get out and uh, have the movie screened and seen. It's not always just what comes in the box office. They have to really work and get these movies. um, More so, the people in the industry, the, the other Hollywood people, they have to push it to them to get them to accept it to get it nominated. So it, it's, 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 it's hard. It's not just, you know, I made a film, yeah. nominate me. <laughs> exactly. A lot of money has to be spent even after a nomination. Uh, I also want all... to give one more shout out. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say, did you hear that this was probably um, the lowest rating Oscar? 
in history? Yeah, I saw that are uh, down 17% from last year. Uh, and But they're still projecting it to be like the biggest non-sporting watched event of the year. So, okay, uh, okay. I guess take it as you will. I mean, you know, it, it's tough to do an award show. Like I said, I, I usually don't watch them. Um, and I think a lot of people forgot that it was coming up. You know, it kind of snuck up on you. Mm. But um, I don't know. I mean, they're still going to do award shows. Just Sorry. in general, I, I think that viewership for a lot of things is down. Like the Super Bowl was down. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the mm-hmm. um, uh, what was it? The the New Year's Eve, uh, the ball dropping event that was down. Like everything is down, and I attribute it to there's so much more for people to be watching now. Mm-hmm. It's exactly. like you you, can, you go dizzy trying to figure out what you want to put your attention to on the television. Yeah, yeah, that's true. yeah. I, I agree. And then uh, one more quick sidebar about the Oscars uh, before we move on. Uh, watch, and I, this is my first time experiencing Tiffany Haddish, uh, and she was in the movie Girls Trip, uh, I think, earlier this year, but she is hilarious, and she is so funny, and her and Maya Rudolph did uh, presented an award uh, beforehand, and their, their, kind of, their back and forth was well executed, and um, yeah, keep an eye out for her. I'm, I don't know if you guys are familiar with her, but uh, she's definitely a, a very funny person and a very good on-screen personality, so I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing more of her I'm stuff. familiar with, with Ms. Groupon. Hey, Tiffany. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone wants, go look up Tiffany Haddish Swap Tour. Uh, in this uh, interview she did on the Jimmy Kimmel Show with uh, Jada Pinkett-Smith, or well, taking Jada Pinkett-Smith and Will Smith on a swamp tour in uh, – Louisiana, and it's a hilarious, a hilarious story. So, I mean, you know, sh- shout out to Tiffany Haddish. She just signed a, a big deal with Netflix. Um, actually, it's a double situation. She's going to be doing stand up, and she also has an animated show coming out on Netflix. So, shout out to. Oh, perfect. Um, Adam, do you, do you have anything coming up that you want to see? So, no, uh, actually, I do. And sorry. Um, I got a little lost connection there, but I did want to speak about, I did go see a movie this past weekend, Red Sparrow, and this is that spy thriller with Jennifer Lawrence in it, and it follows a book. It was was good. Um, It follows a book that was written by a CIA agent uh, that used to work there, so it has, it's one of those kind of, it's not a Jason Bourne, it's not a 007, it's one of those kind of, you know, the muted spy thrillers. Jennifer Lawrence is a Russian uh, girl that's kind of implement, uh, implemented, I guess, into this program, a Sparrow program, where they kind of use any means necessary to get information from the enemy. And then Joel Egerton plays the CIA agent that's kind of working with them. And um, it's two hours and 20 minutes. I think uh, it could have been a little bit shorter. Uh, it's definitely one of those slow-movie ones that scenes. Uh, but it was it was pretty good. Jennifer Lawrence does a great job. She really kind of gets into the role. There's it's it's an intense thing. You know, she gets tortured. There's uh, you know attempted rape scenes. It's 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 an intense movie. So it's not for the weak of heart. There's a lot of violence, a lot of blood um, in the movie. But it's it definitely has a feel that you know this is kind of the day and age of some of these people in espionage. And you know when things go wrong, this is what happens. So. Um, Check it out if you're looking for a change of pace. Besides that, next week has a couple of big hits. Uh, a Wrinkle in Time, uh, which uh, stars Oprah Room 3, amongst uh, many others. And Gringo, which is kind of like a dark comedy uh, that will be coming out this weekend, too. So we'll see how they both pair up against the, the number one movie in the box office for the third week in a row, and I think over $900 million worldwide, Black Panther. Uh, so, you know, the love is still strong there. Uh, Wakanda forever. Exactly. <laughs> Chadwick Boseman was at the Oscars. Uh, so, you know, maybe even Stephen will watch it one more time before it's uh, finished its run. You know, I saw it last night. You did? Uh, my second time. <laughs> did you see? So, did you notice any kind of spoilers you didn't think about, or did you know? Because you know, you don't watch movies often, I don't think, so you don't think about little things like that. But did you start noticing little uh, differences or little things? Well, I heard there was, you know, the two. Uh, I guess leading leading to the sequel, there are two clips. Um, when you go into the credits, I saw the first one the first time I saw the movie, um, but they said the second one wasn't played, so I saw it last night. It was kind of interesting what they're gonna do with that, but. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it was just it's just a great movie. It's a great movie, and um, the theater was packed still. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. Like at one point we were all waiting in the in the lobby, um, and it seemed like everyone that was in the lobby was going to go see Black Panther. I, I'm thinking one went. I didn't see anyone going to other theater, you know, other uh, theater. So, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I hope that what they do when they do the sequel, they bring it even harder because they're gonna have some high expectations. You know what I mean? And so I hope that they bring it, um, they bring it like, and surprise us even more. So. Yeah, I hope so too because they did such a good job. What can they do to top it and make it right. fresh? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it's gonna it's a tall order, so we'll see what happens. But. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So in the in the the comic books, the storyline, uh, T'Challa actually is romantically connected to Storm. Yeah, that could bring a big box office draw. But they already laid a path in this movie, so I don't know how how they would work that. I don't know how they could do that. But they could pull two worlds together, X Men and uh, Black Panther together for the next movie if they wanted to that'd be huge yeah that'd be interesting and you know uh, his, his sister becomes the black panther at one point in the comic book stories as well mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and they kind of set that up already in this one you know you've seen her in the action scenes uh, yeah mm-hmm. and she obviously has talent so they can definitely leverage her to add her into it um so we'll see what happens Mm-mm-mm. all right anything else Nothing for me. Uh, that's it for me. All right. Well, guys, as always, thank you so much for your time. Have a great, great week, and uh, we'll talk next Monday. Sounds Peace. good. All right. We'll be right back after this. Whoop! Whoop! Yeah. 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 Stop up in the club, man, like, who that? They like who that? I said they step up in the club. They like who that? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Step up in the club. They like who that? Money in the air. You know them boys blow stack. Bottles all night. Tell them bring it to the back. Shorty on the dance floor. I'm trying to get behind that. Who that? Step up in the club. They like who that? Money in the air. You know them boys blow stack. Bottles all night. Tell them bring it to the back. Up in VIP with my mama on my lap. Who that? Step up in the club, we party, no comparison nah. Niggas tryna ball forever, Marvin Harrison nah. Them hoes getting fucked together Probably sandwich them, you know I'm only about my cheddar No interfering nah. there, bottle popping up in the air Money throwing in the sky, I'm tryna make a million bucks That's an all-time high, why you always mad we getting paid no. If we ain't from the struggle, my nigga, you can't relate no. My focus on the money, most niggas get in the way You in the way of my success, my nigga, then you stray Okay, you wonder why I don't talk much I stay to myself In the VIP sense and drunk around no one else yeah, Step up in the club, they like who that? Money in the air, you know them boys blow stack Bottles all night, tell them bring it to the back Shorty on the dance floor, I'm trying to get behind that Who that? Step up in the club, they like who that? Money in the air, you know them boys blow stack Bottles all night, tell them bring it to the back Up in VIP with my mama on my lap Who that? You know I'm chasing De Niro Trying to make me a mill though Shorty scheming, I have a demon, don't want no zero yeah. Only chasing them cutthroats, she fucking with the stars Trying to chase the ball without getting on the job Me, I'm never worried, a hoe will never turn me on When money coming in, we battle like a thief for all You jeopardize that, more reasons to get involved Stay low, and always keep your circle small You know they saying why he fly, shorty just trying to get by I'm trying to get up in the rim bounce, you know how we rock Club up in the slide, you know the cheese slide. Can't be with you forever. I need the cheese, my yeah. Step up in the club, they like who that? Money in the air, you know them boys blow stack. Bottles all night, tell them bring it to the back. Shorty on the dance floor, I'm trying to get behind that. Who that? Step up in the club, they like who that? Money in the air, you know them boys blow stack. Bottles all night, tell them bring it to the back. Up in VIP with my mama on my lap. Who that? T.
Chier Corleone. Street Cartel. Bada bing, bada boom. Drippin', drippin', drippin'. Sauce, sauce. I'm a boss, boss. Drippin', drippin', drippin'. Sauce, sauce. I'm a boss, boss. Drippin', drippin', drippin'. Yeah, Corleone is a boss, dripping in too much sauce. 24-inch Cuban wings, quarter cut design on me. Put the dental Rolex on my arm, BBS is all over my charm. Shoe red bottom of a ton, carrying a concealed weapon. Try to catch a body cause I got the juice, and my vest is bulletproof. Got a mouth full of gold tooth, and my Rari ain't got no roof. I used to be on section 8, now I got a crib on a lake. Multi-million dollar estate, with my last name spelled in the gates. Been featured in Source Magazine. I turned my dream to reality. Then put my team on a salary. 500k is my budget. Still independent and loving. CEO of a street cartel. Ball harder than Arc Shell. Featured artists in Double XL. And my Ben is a V12. TA Corleone is the truth. One of the best in the booth. All the new king of the south. Don't mention my name in your mouth. I'll have send them go to your house to kidnap and rape your spouse. Cause I got more verses than preachers Ain't to say I got a real big ego Cause I get them bags of peso In a plug that's an amigo We keep them bricks in the bando Shoot a post it up with the Draco Get it out the mud show no Try harder than snow on the blood Bad boy but ain't signed a plug Bros always trying to mingle Even though they know I ain't single Cause they like I spit that lingo And I'm packing like Mandingo Beat it up cause I like it rough Hoes wanna put me in handcuffs
Well, that's our show. I want to give a special shout-out to Trina Broussard. Remember, her new single, Where I'm Supposed to Be, is available for download. And uh, also, shout-out to Randy Achille. His, his clothing line, Achille Apparel, you've got to check it out. Go to the website. Go to our website, the Stephen Knight, Stephen Knight Show.com, to find out information on both of these uh, wonderful people. Happy birthday again to Ms. Ferguson, and happy belated to Ms. Parker. They'll be back next Monday. Listen, you all have a great week. God bless. Peace and good night. Tonight is all eyes on me Everything's gonna be alright And when we get there I'ma see a pretty, pretty, pretty young thing I'ma ask her to take my